This is the restoration of a violin. We think it was. We know the owner received it in the 40s. So it is at least from the 40s. It was in a German case uh, that um, we can date to sometime after 1880. So there's a 50 year period that we think this violin was made. And we think it's German, but there's really no markings to verify that. The um, chin rest was pressing directly down on the edge of the violin. And the so I'm, and it had no felt pads, so I'm actually adding some leather pads to protect the violin. It looks like the violin fell and landed on that chin rest because there's a crack right where the violin, where the, okay, there it is. Those are very thick pads, but it clears the, um, rolled edge very, very well. So I'm going to take uh, this, take it apart now. Now we're just going to refinish it. It's going to get a new finish. There wasn't anything structurally wrong with the violin in terms of how it plays or the parts inside. So uh, just scraping off the old glue. This crack goes all the way across the edge. But it appears to have been beholding and it doesn't rattle or buzz. So I'm just scraping off the surplus glue. And then I give the whole violin a sanding. I start with uh, like. 180 grit, then 220, and 320. So there's uh, I also um, I use uh, wet sanding, and this keeps the sandpaper from clogging as the finish. Okay, so now it's been sprayed the first time. Now we use slightly finer, there's 220. There was a chip off of this point. This commonly happens. The grain in the spruce, easy to chip on those points. I just glue in a new piece of spruce and then just uh, cut it back to the right size and shape. There we go. Now I've stained it to match the rest of the color of the violin. Give it another sanding, of course, between coats.
Now I'm at 320. I'm fond of uh, spraying the lacquer from a can like this, but um, if the nozzle is even slightly dirty, it will give you a bad spluttery finish, so buy extra nozzles. Okay, this will be the last coat, the last standing. Now I'm going to try to disguise that scar where the previous crack was repaired. And I'm able to disguise it a bit, but it is almost impossible to make it disappear completely. Also, um, during the uh, sanding, the first sanding, some of the color is removed. And uh, you use oil paint on top of the varnish and rub it around. You can move the color around like finger painting almost. But this, uh, you wouldn't do this directly on the wood because the, oil, the paint will stain the wood and it can't be removed or it's difficult. So you, after the varnish, then uh, after the uh, lacquer, then you can add uh, color. You can remove some color without, uh, it's, it's reversible. So everything I do is on uh, restorations. I try to make it a reversible process so that it can't permanently. change the original violin. This violin had some severe cracks in several places that almost make it appear as though it got stepped on in the past, but it was repaired and the repairs of all hell, so um, I didn't bother trying to uh, go inside. Uh, now I'm just fitting the bridge. You put a piece of sandpaper on top of the body and rub the bridge feet to make them fully match the surface. tape protected the fingerboard from the varnish. And now it's time to string it up. bridge was uh, in a good position. It was a good bridge, a good setup when I got it. So uh, my charge was merely to clean it and oh, but one of the old pegs is broken. Most of the pegs on this violin had problems. I had to uh, 
shave them to get them to fit the holes properly, but this one was broken, so I just replaced that with a new pig. Now I'm not a violin player. I'm just testing it. It has a nice sound. And it's quite easy to play for someone who knows how. I'm just cleaning all of the uh, rosin off. Always clean the rosin off your violin after you play it. And here it is in the case that I restored, and that's a uh, restoration of that case. It was actually a much bigger deal than uh, the violin, and you can see that in a different video. Here's a matching case in violin from the 1920s, the 19. Tens, from possibly the 1800s. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and leave a like.